Anastasia Kravchenoka, the queen of the beach on the crest of a wave. European gold medal and Olympic qualification alongside Tina Graudina, she was announced as Latvian Sportswoman of the Year. But right now, she's back at home in Riga, so I called to check in. We talked awards, her love for travel, and how she's passing the time. Hello, Anastasia, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Oh, fantastic news, that is always a good start. Okay, I'm giving you a call today because I want to check in and find out how you're doing and what you're up to, because that's super important at the moment. So first things first, are you doing okay? Yes, I'm very good. <laughs> oh, good news, good news. And where in the world are you? I'm in Latvia right now, in Riga, in my home. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful city. I absolutely love Riga. So I suppose you spend so much time on the road. Is it, is it nice to spend a little bit more time in Riga than you used to? Uh, you know, I am in Riga for one month and I'm a little bit tired from home. I want to travel because I used to travel a lot. I used to be in competition and training camps. And now for one month, it's enough for me. I'm ready to pack my bags and go. That's part of what we love about pro sport, isn't it? Just the chance to, to see the world. Um, so if you weren't in Riga now, where would you be? Oh, this year I was first in a Cape Town and I really like this city. It's so beautiful. It's like a paradise and people there are so friendly. I would be there. Because it's interesting. Uh, I've been lucky enough to speak to a few beach volleyball players recently and when I ask them like their favorite place everyone seems to say Cape Town in South Africa and I wouldn't have expected that. What's so special about it? I don't know the nature. I like nature and there are everything. Blue ocean, high, high mile times and beach with white sand and greens everywhere so it's like a paradise for me and people and food. It's like connecting on, on base, all details. It's like a perfect place. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Sounds yeah. amazing. Maybe we should all go there when lockdown's yeah. over. The first place yeah. we should go. Yeah. yeah. So what are you doing at the moment to fill your days then? Obviously, you're not playing as much as you should be. It's a bit more difficult to train. So how are you filling daylight hours? Yeah, so we have practices at home or in the forest. We can go out from our home and we have like five trainings a day and other time and just studying, reading, drawing, cooking and yeah, a little bit boring sometimes, but. It, sorry, maybe it's the line. It sounds like you said five trainings a day. No, a week. So oh, five trainings a week, not a day. <laughs> It's impossible. I was like, holy moly, how are you managing that? Uh, and what about, what about your team then? Of course, uh, Tina and your coaches, are you guys managing to stay in touch? Yeah, we have a chat and WhatsApp and uh, every time our coaches send us uh, a workout. So, and then we like analyze what we did and how it was. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're managing to sort of stay positive. Um, yeah. Yeah. You've had a pretty amazing time on the court, though, you and Tina, haven't you? Do you feel like, like this break will be good for you? Or did you feel as though you were really sort of building towards Tokyo and ready to take on the world? So I think Tina is a very easygoing person and it's not difficult to live together at all. And we enjoy this time uh, in the training camps and competitions. So a little bit time to be apart is good, but I would uh, choose to be in the competition or training camps or to be at home now. Are you missing sort of going out and playing and all of those things that you enjoy? Yeah, very much, very much. And is it the actual games themselves and the competition or the training as a, as a team? What is it that you're really missing? I really like to train. I like training camps and training, so I miss trainings and, of course, competitions and connecting with our teams, like the atmosphere when we having having uh, trainings together, like a little jokes and 
yeah, I miss all of that. And all competition, it's like a small world for us <laughs> with Tina. And um, I really miss it. And I was so waiting for the season. And now when it's all cancelled, it's like a little bit bad feeling and disappointing. Right. Well, I'm going to show you a video now. And I want you to watch the video and just tell me sort of what your memories are and how it makes you feel, okay? So, it wasn't really a good game for us, we won, but it was so stressful and not qualitative game. Maybe finals, it's happened that games like this in the finals, that I'm happy that we won. It was like magical event and it was unbelievable, but this game <laughs> wasn't good at all. <laughs> So obviously you became European champion, which was such a huge moment. But when you dreamed of being a major champion like that, did you just feel as though like you played the perfect game and it would just be everything that you dreamed of? Was it more about the experience than the, than the result? I, that's very difficult. I think this, this event was like magic. And before this event, I was speaking for my close people and I said, we will be in the final. And they were laughing about it. And I was, why are you laughing? And they, no, we wish it to be in the final, but, but I don't remember what they say. But it was like quite bad feeling for me, but I believe in our team that we can. And in this event, all like small details, like our atmosphere on the court was very good. We like supported each other very much and we, like concentrated on the next point and not thinking about lose points. So, yeah, and game after the game, it's like you only concentrate on the next game. And then when we won, it was amazing feeling. But when I imagined in my mind how it will be, it, it was quite different. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, I love that shot at the end where you've got the trophy in your hands, your gold medals, all the sort of golden ticker tape, and the the bottles of champagne. Did That's that... why I said it was magical, and I have a picture of this moment and this uh, gold lines are blowing, and yeah, just so... like in fairy tale. <laughs> Because you, you guys have known each other as a team for a long time. When you first started playing together, did you think that you could go on to sort of be world level and European champions and qualify for Olympics? Is that something you always believed in? I think that, yes, maybe at this moment when we started to play, there wasn't like this goal in the mind. There was like, but we want to play a beach volleyball together and like achieve something, but, but we will qualify for the Olympics and become a European champions, uh, champions. It becomes like bigger dream for, uh, from time because at first, you know, the big goal is to win under 18. Then it's like growing every time. But I think we both are very, um, very motivated, like responsible and ambitious. So we wanted to show our best result mm -hmm. every time. What about the Olympic Games then? I saw a lovely quote on your Instagram. There was a picture of the two of you and I've got it here. It's dreams are not canceled, just postponed. So is the Olympics the dream for you? Yeah, it is a dream. And could you imagine that like in 2016, then our coach said for us, but you need to qualify for Olympic Games. We said to him, like, uh, coach, I think that we have uh, other things in our lives. We like, need to study. We will play beach volleyball for sure. But we didn't like imagine that we will qualify in this Tokyo Olympics because we are quite young. So, and then we qualify. It also was like unbelievable. And now we are qualifying and we are not so stressful about like uh, Olympic qualifying and so on. And our team's also laughing every time that we can just lie down and relax. So yeah, it's amazing feeling, but this season we wanted to show that it's not like easy, but it's not a mistake that we qualified. 
and we wanted to be in the best 12 teams to get a good spot in the pool in, in the Olympic Games. So, so was it? It sounds there like it was a little bit of a surprise that you qualified. I mean, obviously, you know you've got the quality and you've had all these great results and these these wins, but but did it come as a bit of a surprise? Yes, I think it was a surprise for everyone, for us too, because we went to this event like we didn't know what to expect because it was uh, deeper and um, like a lot of pools every time you need to play and a lot of games and we knew that we are quite young that it will be easier for us to survive with all games but this event wasn't perfect we lost a lot of games in the pools and it was very like lucky for us then italy lost to germany and we become first in our pool when we needed to play a semi-final against czech and we never played with them and I don't know if you see the final, but this game was quite, I don't know how to explain, but um, yeah, we were down for 7-12 in the third set and then we won. So it also sounds unbelievable but with good uh, team against, like Czech is a very good team. Best surprise ever. Um, and now you get to go to Japan. Have you been to Japan? Have you played in Japan before? No, no, we didn't. Yeah, I know. It would be very hot and humid. But yeah, but now we have a lot of time to prepare ourselves. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You, you talk about being young. So an extra year of experience, an extra year to prepare yeah. yourselves, that's only going to make you stronger, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is because in the... Uh, in every competition, we can get a new experience, and every training camp also brings us a lot of like new, new attitude, new details in the game, atmosphere, and we are studying from it. So one year more to train and then to show best results in the Olympics is good for us. One like not so good thing that Tina she took a gap year this year to prepare for the Olympics and next year she needs to go to university okay. but I think everything will be okay we will be together and we'll prepare and do all the best everything for a reason you are in that special group of people who who get to represent their country at the Olympics and uh, I can't wait to see how you get on uh, right I'd like to play a quick game with you can we do that yeah, sure. <laughs> cool. Uh, this game is called Simply the Best. So I'm going to list some things and I want you to tell me what you think the best thing is in each category. So let's okay. start with the best team you've ever played against. Best team. I think it's Australia, Talika and Mariafa. They have like a different level of the game because Talika is very high player and she is a physical player and Mariafa she's very technique and they playing a lot fast game and on two so I think they are best. The best sport apart from beach volleyball? Hmm. Uh, I like a lot of sports. <laughs> Me too. I like basketball, tennis and track and field athletics so yeah. but which is the best which is the best i would say it's uh, tennis <laughs> best song to listen to before a game huh it's very difficult for me because i have really bad memory on the songs <laughs> and they're not so concentrated on the song so okay i can't answer <laughs> Best moment of your career? Uh, it's Olympic qualification in China. Best atmosphere you've ever experienced at a game? In Yurma, in Latvia, in our country. It was um, 2017 European Championship and we got fifth and we were very young and atmosphere, a lot of friends and family are by our and yeah it was amazing best place in the world volleyball has taken you cape town <laughs> i knew you'd say that <laughs> uh, what, 
Sydney too. I like Manly Beach and Sydney, yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, you're a lucky person. Uh, what's the best thing about being a professional? It's traveling a lot and meeting new people. And finally, what's the best food to eat after you've won a game? Margarita, pizza <laughs> margarita. <laughs> that is what I'm having for dinner tonight. So fantastic. <laughs> oh, great nice. stuff. Uh, I, honestly, you can't, cannot stop me eating pizza. Uh, interesting. So uh, you were talking there about liking lots of other sports. What did you say? Track and field athletics, basketball, yeah. tennis. Did you play any other sports before beach volleyball took your life? Uh. I played also indoor volleyball, okay, but okay. before I started practicing volleyball, I didn't like sports at all, oh, wow. <laughs> really. I was uh, a kid, so every time he got his sport back at home to not going on a sport lesson at school. Yeah, but then it became my passion to play volleyball and I like to play basketball because we played a lot of school co competition in basketball. And other coaches also wanted to take me in a basketball team, like to play in a better level, not a school level. Um, but I never played like tennis. So I only played beach tennis. Okay. But I like to watch because my grandfather, he every time, like all my life, he wanted me to play tennis. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about uh, life outside beach volleyball then because i see on your instagram today that you're having trouble with your pet pooping on the floor is that oh uh, yeah it was like a funny moment of, of the morning i don't know what happened he is like he's very good cat he is he is, his behavior is like perfect but i don't know what happened today for him maybe he feels ill i don't know <laughs> oh accidents do happen who, who is the cat is the cat around can we have a look at the cat oh um, i think no he not no okay okay so off the court yeah. then um what do you do for entertainment what do you do to make yourself happy I love reading and on the competition and training camps I read a lot and what else? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I love to study too. Sometimes it's very difficult to concentrate uh, but now I have a lot of free time to make like my master thesis and so on and I'm really working on it and then I finished my bachelor, it was like one month free and I didn't know what to do, like it was a lot of free time and I didn't know how to entertain myself. So, and I decided to go to master. Wow. Yeah. How do you find time for it all? That is, uh, that's remarkable. Maybe I'm going to show you another video now. Again, this game. <laughs> Was it nice to sort of, for, for the CV to, to recognize your successes as a peer? Yeah, it was, we were so grateful about it and we, we were so proud to present our country. And there are so many teams in Europe which can be uh, queens of Europe and uh, they decided that we are, <laughs> we are getting this big, how to say, <laughs> yeah. And, it was a big surprise for us because uh, like last year, um, Czech uh, girls, uh, Maki and Bada, they got the Queens of the Beach and they won like big event, Vienna Major and something else. And we were, we didn't think that European Championship will got this Queens of the Beach. So yeah, it was quite there were two moments in that video and the first one you said oh this game it sounds like you it sounds like you hate all the games you ever play <laughs> but then there was the the other moment the celebration where you were hugging on the floor and you said oh yeah. i could watch this moment forever yeah because as i said this final game wasn't good for us there was a lot of mistakes and it was quite stressful but then it was like a 
you in the pedestal, then we got the medals when we got the cup and this gold blowing in the air. It's, it's like magic and really I will remember it forever in my life and I will tell my, I don't know, grands, uh, granddaughters and grandsons about this moment. Um, do you have any ambitions then? Is there, is there any sort of one thing that if you achieved that, then you could be like, cool, I can retire happy now, I've, I've done it all? I think no, because um, it's not about achievements. I just want to be happy in my life and I want to enjoy everything in my life. And when will be the moment when I will be tired from volleyball, tired from competition and training comes, I will do something else, which will bring me joy and happiness and love. So now I'm happy what I'm doing and I hope I will play beach volleyball for many years and I will enjoy this game many years. <laughs> I called today to, uh, as I said, to find out how you're doing and check in and spread a little bit of joy. And you've given me absolute joy today. It has been so nice to speak to you. Uh, before we hang up the phone, we're going to have lots of your fans around the world watching this. Have you got a message for them? I wish that everyone will be happy and enjoy this difficult moment in our lives and fight like a small defense, a sound of birds, or then you feel how wind is blowing your clothes and you will feel really happy because this is the main idea of your lives, to feel happy and joy and get joy, love and happiness. That <laughs> is perfect. Thank you so much. Oh. Uh, <laughs> huh, right, um, I can't wait till this is all over and we can catch up in person. But until then, take care of yourself. See you later. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. Um, I've forgotten. Bye. I've forgotten how to say it. Ata. 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 <laughs> and that, my friends, was Anastasia. How lovely was she? So great to talk to her about the amazing year. European champion, queen of the beach, qualifying for Tokyo, and somehow managing to do a master's degree as well. If anyone knows how to manage time like that, then please get in touch because I could really, really benefit from it. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you are enjoying the beach volleyball side of the unscripted, then make sure you head over to CEV's uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter because we've got some great beach volleyball players on there, including Maki Slukova, who of course was queen of the beach the year before Anastasia. Uh, right then. The eagle-eyed amongst you, the regular viewers of the Unscripted series, will notice that I am in a slightly different studio today. This is where we've been recording the CEV's official podcast, The Ace Space. We've got a great opening guest. If you've not already listened, then head over to the social media and check it out. I won't spoil it for you, but keep your ears peeled, not your eyes this time, because it's going to be audio only, but we've got some great hosts, some great guests as well, and the conversation gets even deeper than we get in Unscripted, so please check it out, because we're having great fun making them. In the meantime, I hope you are all still looking after yourselves doing your best uh, the reason I'm wearing a hat is because all the barbers are still closed in London and I couldn't unleash that on anybody but we're doing all right here and I hope you're doing all right wherever you are in the world as well get in touch let me know because I love to hear from you but until next time take care of yourselves bye-bye